Today we are going to be creating a textured snail, like the example here on the screen. We are going to be using three-dimensional texture and implied texture. Three-dimensional texture is texture that you can actually feel, and implied texture is creating a surface that looks like it has texture, but when you actually feel it, it feels smooth. So we are going to be adding some objects like dried beans, peas, and pastas to create some actual texture on our paper. And we're going to be using a rubbing that is putting something rough or bumpy underneath our paper to create some implied texture, as well as using some mark making to create some implied texture. So let's get started. Okay, so we are going to be creating this textured snail. Um, the first thing you're going to need is a piece of brown craft paper or gray um, construction paper or a grocery bag would work, a piece of cardboard, whatever you have. Um, I'm working on a 9 by 11 piece of paper, so something around that would be good. And then you're going to need a white piece of paper. You can just use white printer paper for this part. A pencil. Um, we're going to be using some sort of paint um, or marker if you don't have paint. Crayon. And then if you have any um, beans, like dried beans, pa dried pasta, dried peas, things like that. You can use that. If you don't have that, maybe you could find some little small rocks outside or um, some beads or something like that for your project. And then scissors and glue. So the first thing we're going to do is we are going to use our tracer to um, make the shell of our um, snail. example a little bit so um, I need to leave a little bit of room for his head here so and I'm going to trace this lightly so there is you might I guess I better do it darker just in case you can't see it very good I would trace it lightly um, if I was you but I will do it darker so that you can see it better okay so here is the snail's shell and now I'm gonna make his face. It's kind of like a fat worm. So he's got kind of a, just a rounded head and then his body. And down below, he's got kind of a wavy line and his tail. And then that just comes up to meet the shell like so. So this is what your snail should look like. Um, on a lot of the pictures, they have his head kind of tilted a little bit more like this. Okay. Then you can add a face. It looks like some of these have used construction paper and they've even added some of the beans for his um, face. Also, there's like tentacles on the snail. Um, do not try to draw those now because they will be hard to cut out if you do that. So I'm just gonna make a couple of circles for now. And let's see. A mouth and a nose. So that is gonna be my snail. Um, the next thing that we are going to do is we are going to make some concentric circles inside of our snail's shell. All right, so that just means you're gonna start in the middle by making a circle and then make some more circles. Make sure you can at least fit one finger in between each of these lines because we need to have space to paint them and space to add our texture, our beans and things like that. So that is probably pretty good right there. Let me just read the directions here. All right. So the next step, we're gonna put this off to the side. And the next step is to get a piece of cardboard. 
Um, it doesn't have to be a super big piece of cardboard, but it should be like corrugated cardboard, like a cardboard box, okay? Um, even if you just had like a little piece off of the box, that would work just fine. All right, and then I'm going to put my paper on here and I'm gonna find a brown crayon. And you're gonna kind of wanna use your crayon flat and you're going to rub it and make this. This is going to be the ground that your snail is going to be on. Um, in the example, one of the students used black and brown, so it's up to you. Any darker color will do, really. So you can see I'm creating a little bit of implied texture with my cardboard here. All right, so I think that's probably pretty good. Oh, I also said in the directions that you could use a comb, like a hair comb, that would also create some cool texture like this. All right, so the next step is we're going to be cutting out our snail and gluing it down. Um, I hope I left enough room to make the plants. All right, there. The next step, we're going to be gluing our snail so it looks like it's sitting um, on top of the ground. Remember, you don't need a lot of glue, just a little bit around the outside edge will do. I just like to trace the shape. glued on nicely. So the next step is with our pencil, we're gonna draw some plants. Use a lot of details. Look at the example um, in the lesson plan to see, because there is a lot of details in the plants. It's I, I would say it looks like a tree, but a snail is like super tiny on the ground. So it's really just like a plant that looks like a tree to the snail. Um, and then there's some other little details, so you can do more than one, like you might want to have one coming out here and one coming around here. Um, you can look at the examples to see. So I'm going to um, start doing that. And then it says, use paint to add color to the plants and to the snail's shell. Add some dots to the snail's body and to the outer circle. So I'm going to be doing some uh, mark making around this outside of the circle and on his body. I'm also gonna be coloring in his face and um, either painting or using a marker to color in the plants. So I'm gonna work on that right now. All right, so I have some paint. Um, I'm just gonna be using acrylic paint, acrylic craft paint, because that's all that I have. And I've got a brown Sharpie, but you can use any kind of markers that you have. If you don't have um, paint, that's fine. Okay, so my um, camera shut off a little bit, but this is what the finished um, 
painting part of it looks like. So you could either use paint or you could also use a um, marker for this. So I've got my, my implied texture here on the ground with my crayon and then all of these little marks that I made inside on the body of the snail and on the outer part of the shell. That is my implied texture. Now I'm gonna add my actual texture. So you're gonna need some glue, um, like Elmer's glue, not a glue stick. And then you're gonna to need to find either beans, dried pasta, um, maybe little pebbles from outside, things like that. Things that have actual texture that you can glue. So what I found, I, I found out that I don't have a lot of dried um, beans and things, but I had some rice, I had some um, dried pasta, and I had, these are called lentils. They kind of look like little peas, but they're called lentils. So this is what I'm going to use. So you don't need to put this everywhere. Look at the example. So in the shell, and maybe um, on some of the plants is where you can add some of this. So, um, and I also said if you wanted to use some of it on the face, you could too, or on the um, tentacles, if you didn't already draw those on. So I'm gonna get started with gluing these on. Um, it's probably best to put the glue actually right on your project and then stick down the objects. So I'm going to see, is this going to come out? I'm going to go, oops, that's kind of a lot, but I'm going to go all the way around like this. And then I am going to stick my shells on because these are kind of a bigger pasta. I need a little bit more glue for that. All right, so I'm finishing up the last little bits here. All right, so this is how our textured snail turned out. All right, I've got lots of little um, 3D texture around the artwork. These ones are a little bit big. I would suggest doing smaller ones. And then we've got our implied texture. I think it turned out really cool. I'll try to move it a little bit closer so you can have a little bit of a close-up. All right, so I cannot wait to see how yours turned out.